This video is not about warping. I know what the title and thumbnail say, but this video is about something much bigger than that. Troubleshooting and how to kill 3D printing problems. Hey guys, I'm Jake and welcome to CAD Class, where this week we are going to be systematically looking at just one problem in 3D printing and then analyzing and seeing all the different ways that we can solve this problem. We'll be looking at all the ways to solve this problem in CAD, material choice, slicer settings, hardware, and slicer program hacks. The purpose of this video is to change how you guys approach problem solving and to see all the different avenues you can take to fix it. Now, in the world of making, 3D printing is a really fantastic example of when there's never really just one reason why something goes wrong. Oh, do you have under extrusion problems? Well, that could be from a clog in your nozzle, or some frozen plastic in your PTFE, or even a crack in your extruder arm, or worn down extruder gears, or a faulty extruder motor, or about a dozen other things. And after you check for all of those problems, how do you know that it wasn't your material that made that problem, or even your slicer settings? These problems can arrive from any of these areas, and for most of the part, if you understand the problem, then you can find a solution from almost any point from 3D model, to 3D model. Warping or peeling is one of those really funny problems that pops up all throughout the history of 3D printing. In the early days of desktop 3D printers, warping and delamination was a massive problem because most of the 3D printing filaments that hobbyists could get their hands on reliably was ABS. If you've never had to print with ABS, then consider yourselves one of the lucky ones. Before 3D printers were a ubiquitous tool to makers, we had old school 3D printers that were essentially the size of fridges that had to keep in heat as much as possible. ABS is one of those funky materials that not only requires an incredibly high nozzle temperature, but also a very hot ambient environment temperature of about 60 degrees. In the old days, opening up the door to get your print literally felt like you were walking into the desert. The reason you needed this immense heat was because if the delta between the ambient room temperature and the nozzle temperature was too great, then the plastic would contract and start to delaminate from itself. Even if you got a fantastic first layer, halfway through the print, the layers could start to peel off themselves. The same exact thing happens when you leave plywood outside and it gets wet. It absorbs moisture and starts to swell and contract, and it essentially just leaves you with a really crappy material. Because of all these issues, ABS is becoming significantly less of a fashionable material to print with because there's new materials that are out that have very similar strength to weight ratio without any of the warping issues. So now we know one of the reasons why warping happens, how do we fix it? A big clue is that warping, curling, or peeling, whatever you want to call it, usually always happens at sharp corners. Sharp corners obviously have very little surface area, so a very quick fix is just to get rid of them. Go into your CAD program of choice, and everywhere you see a vertical corner, add a fillet. These fillets will round over the sharp corners and massively reduce the likelihood of curling. The other added benefit is while the hot end is moving, it doesn't need to slow down and then speed back up around those corners. It can keep that high acceleration during harsh directional changes. If you do need to keep those sharp corners for your design, then here's a trick that I just tested. Apparently, if you cut out concentric perimeters on the underside of your model, it will also help out with warping because the distance the material can lift is cut off. And yeah, after running a test, it seems to work quite well. I wouldn't have thought it would have worked that well, but the sharp corners are incredibly sharp and I'm seeing absolutely no signs of warping. As soon as you have your model looking the way you want it, the other place to fix this problem is in your slicer. Now, the first trick we have covered in a previous video about our reprinted frame, where you can essentially add sacrificial localized brims to the sharp corners of your model to hold down just the corners. Once the print is done, you can peel them off Clean it up with a blade and there you go, no warping. In the 3D printing community, they're often called mouse ears, but in the Prusa slicer, they're known as helper discs. To get to them, simply right click the workspace, add part, gallery, click on helper discs and place in your workspace. Then you can move it around to the right location and copy and paste as many as you need. These are tools that work really well and have almost no post-processing time. Highly recommend. The second method for reducing warping in your slicer software is to simply not put the corners of your model at the corners of your build plates. On some older printers, they often have just one heating element at the center of the bed, which heats the very center just fine, but the closer you get to the edges, and especially the corners, that heat starts to dissipate. So if you've got a model like this, then you're probably fine, but if you have a model like this, then you are definitely gonna need some mouse ears. 
While we're in the slicer program, we may as well talk about one of the settings that can massively help you with warping. Speed. Slowing down your print on the first layer is one of the best and easiest ways to get a successful first layer. You can ramp up the speed for the rest of the print, but for that first layer, treat it like a crockpot. Low and slow. Finally, the hardware is the last place to solve any lingering problems. When you boil down warping, it really all does come down to adhesion. Is your filament being stuck down to your build plate, or is it going to turn into a big pile of spaghetti? One of the most common things that I see newbies in the 3D printing communities do is they always print every single model in exactly the same position, the middle. It looks like it would be the right place, but at the end of the day, you are essentially concentrating all of the wear and tear that you can put across the entire build plate onto just one location. If you print your models in different locations every single time, then not only are you extending the life of your build plate, but you are also guaranteeing almost never to run into warping. All that and a good oil-free bed, and you're good to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to pick up a copy of our book on Autodesk Fusion so you can learn more about CAD design for your 3D printing, then you can find the link to our Amazon page in the description below. And as always, we give away the entire book for free on our website at cadclass.org. If you have any other cool tips or tricks that you love to use in 3D printing or CAD, then let us know down in the comment section below. Cheers, everyone.